One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Guess what I'm reading? <laughs> After plan, my plan is to first read the Lord of the Rings, which is solely focused on the three books as part of the series. Additionally, the Hobbit, which is the one that started them all. There is a ring that has been used. Years and years ago, six hundred years ago, and it's the one ring that is cannot be destroyed and seems to be able to destroy everyone. The great evil Sauron used this ring and like tried to kill everybody with it. He wants to take over the world and rule it as his, obviously. And then, unlucky him gets killed, but the ring never ever got destroyed. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So. Fast forward six hundred years, we realize we we follow a young little hobbit named Frodo as he lives his life in Shire. He's very happy, and today is his uncle's birthday, Bilbo Baggins. And Bilbo is a little bit strange, and not everybody likes him, and he's getting more strange and stranger over time. I have some notes, everybody, and I'll be reading the Two Towers next, and. I'm very excited. Part 2 is here to come. And I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye! I'm currently on chapter 5 of book number 3, I think. Yeah, and that would be... Um, Okay, my edition is literally the entire Lord of the Rings that is being split into three parts. And so the pages start from where the last one ended. And so we are on 477. So about 77 pages into this one. Immediately super easy to get into. I, I don't know what I expected because I just finished the first one. On to the next one. And we start off with um, Frodo and Sam parting ways. And the rest of the crew are in a disarray with the orcs. And so they are all journeying in their own ways. And our poor um, hobbits, Merry and Pippin, have been captured by the orcs. And so now they also have gone their separate ways. And everybody split, you know? And... <laughs> I'm loving it. We have already reached a part where uh, Mary and Pippin meet the ends. And I would like to talk about the ends because I love the ends so goddamn much. They're so damn adorable. And they're just really wise beings that have lived on Earth for a long, long time. They are really huge creatures. And how the ends describe themselves is that they're, if if orcs is the evil version of an elf, the ants is like an equivalent, a good equivalent to trolls. But they don't look anything like trolls. They appear to be like trees. They look like trees. They love trees. They love nature. They love, you know, plants. And, you know, they want to protect the plants and they want to protect the trees. And so the ants are super adorable. We have the ants, we have the ant maidens, we have the ant wives. And so we learned that the ants are very, very few now because they, they haven't had any offsprings for a really, really, really long time. Because the ants and the ant wives are both very separate beings. The ants love trees, they love the forestry. But the ant wives, they really prefer vegetation, smaller plants, you know, growing flowers and growing uh, yeah, vegetation. And so they've sort of like parted ways in that aspect, but they have never strayed too far from each other. But after Sauron, you know, after Sauron decided to be like, yeah, bitches, I'm going to destroy the entire world with my one ring and cause the biggest war that happened, the M wives were like essentially demolished. We're not too sure because they disappeared, but we're not too certain if they were completely eradicated. And so the ants are searching for their end wives and you know they, they are really sad of the loss of their end wives and that's why they're so few but they're so cute and they have their little end homes and have their their language is so musical you know i thought 
Tolkien only made Elvish, but um, I I think he did a little bit for Entish, and Entish language is so musical. I I I I str- mm, lost for words clearly because I don't I don't know what to say, and it's so sweet like the way that it just the way that they speak is very long winded and it's just lyrical and just one word essentially strings into the next really easily. I mean that's at least how Andy Circus uh, narrates. Uh, the ends and it's so cute they're so cute i i don't know what else to say i don't know why i'm being stupid right now but the ends are really protectors of nature protectors of the forest they want the best for the trees they love their trees and so they are very angry that saruman the evil wizard essentially um is destroying their forest to build his orc army and they're pissed which rightfully so and I really enjoy the portrayal of the ants here so much more than the movies. I think, I think the movies did them a little bit of a disservice. And also, um, the movies made them very cute as well. But not much of a portrayal of them. And, and really did a disservice to them, I feel, in terms of the personalities of the ants. And, um, you know, the resolve that they have against Saruman. So yeah, um, that's where I'm at. Not much to update without really spoiling you. But I just thought... I want to talk about the ants and how cute they are. Okay, catch you in the next update. I got an update for you guys. So, I've read quite a bit in the two towers. And right now, we're about... We're about 200 pages plus plus in. Yeah. So, um... What can I say without spoiling? Because this is the second book. Um, okay. Compared to the first book... This is probably less interesting because we are setting up for a lot of things to happen. And clearly, it is a setup book for the last part of the book. So this is where the slog is happening right now. We are seeing our characters all separated and they're doing their own thing. They're achieving their own goals. And that's the part where it's getting a little bit boring because, you know, I really like the camaraderie between all the characters. So seeing them apart is making me a little upset. But I'm dealing with it. And we're learning a lot more about the world as per usual. And like I talked to you guys about the ants previously. I really love them and they're so cute. And they're way cooler in the books than in the movies. So right now, we are at a part where we are following uh, Frodo, Sam's and Gollum's perspectives. And we're seeing them travel through uh, towards Mordor so they can destroy the ring. That's the whole purpose of the journey. And you're starting to see the party struggle quite badly because um, they are they're very tired. They're running low on food. And Lembus is just an energy bar, but not but it's not anything that really makes you feel like you're eating food. That's how Sam describes it, which I find very apt. Yeah. And Gollum is Wow, um, because I'm reading the, I'm reading this together with the audiobook that's narrated by Andy Circus, who plays Gollum. Dude, the way that he voices Gollum in here, as huge, really, really, really immersive. You really feel like Gollum's right there with you. It's so scary. Um, am I still sort of scared of Gollum, even though I am in love with him in some ways? Yes, yes, I am. I don't really care, but um, yeah. I'm I'm really liking where it's, this is going, but I can't talk much about it because, like I said, second book, I don't want to really spoil too much. You, I mean, a lot of Ring has been out for really long, and most people have read it, but not everyone has read it. I mean, I'm reading it now in my twenties, so not trying to spoil the experience for anyone. So that's what's up so far. I guess I'll keep you guys updated at the last part when things end. Okay, bye. A little side note everyone before I give you guys an update later on. I went to a cat fair, a cat expo, 
and <laughs> got a bunch of like cute stickers to put onto my Kindle. So I just want to show you guys like what I got. So very cute. Um, I got a sticker sheet and I got uh, from one store and a um, two die cut stickers from another. So this is from Unfinished Tales. It is so cute, don't you think? So she has a grey cat called Pippins. And yeah, so <laughs> they're so cute. Pippins, what an excellent um, reference to Pippin. But I know it's not probably why she named it Pippin, but oh. Okay. Love the rings. Perfect for this vlog. Yes. And yeah. And then I got a different cat sticker. This is so cute. And the owner was so kind to give me a different one for free. So I have two. Oh, this is so sweet, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna like find a way to paste it on my Kindle. Yeah, because um my Kindle currently is quite empty. Like we just have these stickers here. So I'm gonna find a way to paste them somewhere and leave some space for here. Uh, probably because I'm going to Japan in September and I want to paste more stickers. So yeah, I, just a little random update for fun because I thought this was so cute and I needed to share with everyone. Yeah, alright, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm just a little bit further away from the end already. Yeah, catch you guys in the end. Yeah, catch you guys in the next update. Hey everyone, so I finished two towers yesterday which I told you guys I was in the last part. And then I would update you after I was done. And I can't say much in order not to spoil all of you. But I'm giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it thoroughly. And, and here's why, despite it being the slog of um, practically this entire story is split into 3 parts. So I really enjoyed knowing more about the world. The sad part for me was truly the fact that our characters are all split right now and they're all discovering different parts of Middle Earth to give us as a reader bigger insight but also to prepare for the biggest battle at the very last part of the story. And so we learn a lot and um, we learn about the ends which is the, these big tree gods that have first walked Middle Earth and they know so much about Middle Earth and they're very wise and they're very grand. And I love them very much. They're very, very cool, like I said in the previous clips. And, and that we also learn so much more about them in the books than in the movies. Because obviously the movies don't have time to talk about them in the books. So there's that. That's on the ends. But we also learn about uh, Rohan, this human country. And we learn a lot more about human history in Middle Earth itself. So because we talk about Rohan... No. And they talk about Minas Tirith, which is where uh, Barmir is from, and how humans have always interacted over the course of time in Middle Earth, and how they have been one civilization and slowly drifted, and how they continue to maintain their relationships together, especially with Minas Tirith and um, Rohan. And Rohan is like a horse country, or so they call themselves. And we can see how um, they battle in him in Helm's Deep at some point in the story as well. Without too much spoilery, I don't talk about how the Battle of Helm's Deep goes. But um, the Battle of Helm's Deep was not as exciting in the movies as the books. I, I keep referring the two because I watched the movies first. So I just want to give my perspective on how I felt about the movies and the books. To give a very holistic comparison for everyone. But yeah, it's way cooler than the movies but for obvious reasons. Um, Tolkien is clearly not an action writer, it doesn't matter, but it's still engaging in terms of Helm's Deep and he talks a lot about like caves and how dwarves um, has their relationship with caves and how elves don't like caves and you learn more about the lore basically of his different races in Middle Earth. Yeah, and um, that's one part and we also pen to um, Frodo's journey still towards Mordor to, to melt the ring away, to kill it, to destroy it. And, you know, the ring is such a bitch. Like, if she was a character, I, would, I think it's she. Yeah, she is 
horrible. She's causing everyone to be upset with each other. And clearly a shit stir is the ring that it is. But yeah, and we're introduced to Golem who follows um, Frodo on the journey. And I, as you guys see, seen, I got a part of Golem. And I love him so much. He's so cute. Don't you think? Oh, look at him and his little fish. Okay. Oh. All right. But, um, yeah, I love Golem the most uh, from the movies. Uh, and in the books, he is kind of strange as per usual. And I still love him very much. He's very cute. And when he's trying to be good, he is, he is trying to be good. He's just, he's just psychotic. He's just off his meds. He just needs a little bit of help, okay? The ring, his toxic ex, essentially. And, yeah, and it seems Miko struggle with himself. His bi, not his bipolar, his multiple personality disorder, essentially, right? With my precious. Um, he struggles with being Golem and being Smeagol. And you see the power dynamics between himself. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very fun to watch him be crazy and also not crazy. And, and, this, and his relationship with Sam was actually something very funny to me. And I love watching the two of them banter like an old married on the verge of divorce couple. And yeah, and Sam is so cute. The potatoes, you know, taters are potatoes. And he's so cute. And and more about Frodo and Sam is that Frodo is struggling very hard, clearly, to carry this ring. And they're running out of supplies. And he's very tired from the drag of carrying the ring. And, and from the fact that they are really running out of proper food to eat. And they've been eating lamb's bread for most of the travel. And... I guess that's the part that was truly also very boring because it's just them traversing through large amounts of terrain and you just feel the biggest dread of reading them suffer but you don't get any like great outcome from it and I think that really drags the reader down with everything truly and yeah but 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 you know Sam and Frodo's relationship clearly are put a little bit on the strain from spending a lot of time together and as well as the fact that the ring is really coming between them. and But Sam is trying his best. And that's what's so enduring about him. Like he's so sweet and he really cares so much about Frodo. And he can never find a better companion than Sam Wise Gamgee. Truly could not. Yeah. And oh, we learn about Faramir. And actually Faramir is not so much an asshole as he is in the books. Uh, he's really like not too bad and he's pretty, pretty awesome. And he has more constraint on himself than his brother, so far it seems, when it comes to the ring. And he's pretty great, and he talks a lot to Frodo about, you know, the country and why, what is Minas Tirith, and the politics of his country, and why, you know, they, they as the, the watchmen of Minas Tirith have not become the royalty of Minas Tirith just because of ages past. So yeah. And right now, we ended off sort of on a cliffhanger because of where Frodo and Sam have gone. And so I'm sure in the final part of the book, The Return of the King, is going to focus on the other group that is away from Frodo and Samwise. And it's a little bit cliffhanger on the Samwise and Frodo storyline, but we have to go to Minas Tirith now. And we get to see Minas Tirith. And I'm excited with where we are going. And I'm sorry that we didn't have much B-roll in this vlog. But honestly, I didn't have much things to say. I was just reading big chunks of it and just like going through with it. And knowing that I don't really have much to say because of the spoilery content. And um, I, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll catch you guys in the next one where I'll talk about the return of the king. But otherwise... I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this gave you a better insight into book part two in the box. Yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!